And as we were walking in, I had a chance to meet Richard at the back, and he was uh, saying that the three of us here, Anthony and Joe, myself, our combined ages would not add up to his age. He's 75. Well, he was wrong, because I'm 37 and Anthony's 32. So unless Joe's only seven, he's wrong. The church is young. The church is alive. We have these beautiful young seminarians. A fruit of your prayers. God is so happy to see these young men following his invitation to follow him more closely in the priesthood. And the priesthood is wonderful. If any of you young people, young men, are perhaps hearing God call, don't be afraid to give him the first shot in your life. You won't be disappointed. As I was going through the readings today, I was remembering when I was 16, I grew up in New Zealand, but I got invited to a mission in the Bahamas. <laughs> I didn't actually didn't want to go, I was kind of shy, uh, but my brother signed us up and we went and we teamed up with a, about 80 young people from, mostly from the US, uh, high school kids and college kids. And uh, we spent the whole week going door to door and, and inviting people to the parish. I remember one afternoon, we uh, ended up playing a game of basketball, these, these guys. They were really good. And after the game, uh, one of the priests who was leading the missionary group, he sat us down and started telling us a story, and I've never forgot it. It's a true story about uh, a young kid, high school kid, and he was walking back home, and he grew up in, in Ireland. And he was getting closer to his home, he noticed there was a house in his neighborhood that was on fire. As he got closer, he realized it was his house, and he went running, and his family was outside, and the neighbors were there, but then they realized that his baby brother was still inside. So without even thinking, this young man he raced inside. It's all on fire, things are falling down. He races up, grabs his baby brother, runs downstairs, passes him off, saves his baby brother. But just as he's about to get out of the house, this beam falls on top of him. He survived, but he ended up in a wheelchair for the rest of his life. Fast forward 16 years. The little baby brother is now a teenager. And it's Friday night. And he says to his mom, Mom, all my friends are going to a party. I can go, right? And his mom says, oh, Well, actually, not tonight. Your dad and I have a commitment. You've got to stay home and look after your older brother. And the teenager says, I'm I really want to go to that party. Why do I always have to look after my brother and he's just there in the wheelchair? And his mother just looks at him. Don't you remember what your brother did for you? And around the corner, his older brother was there just listening, a little tear falling down his face. And that priest told us that story. And like I said, I've never forgotten it. And he said, how often we forget what Jesus did for us on the cross. We complain. We complain. Why me? Why me? Today, we're talking about the cross. What is the cross? Why the cross? And how can we live with the cross. What is the cross? Well, the cross for each one of us is a little different, isn't it? Some of us have been given the gift of a physical infirmity. And we have our elderly people here. And we're so glad you're with us. Hey, but as, as your life gets old, older, your, our body starts to break down. Right? We have to use a walker. Right? We can't run like we used to. And that's a cross. We can't do all the things that we would like to do. Some of us have a lot of arthritis. Some of us have cancer. Uh, some of us have mental illnesses or loved ones that do. We have to look after them. And it's a cross. It's a burden. 
Others, we think about relationships, right? There's always one person that we just, when we sit down for Thanksgiving, right? We just, we, we don't want to be with them in the same room, right? They're a cross for us, yeah? We can think of several, all of us, yeah? And we are probably a cross for them too, if we're honest, yeah? These crosses in our life. Well, sometimes it's really just a cross of putting up with myself, right? There I am, always putting my foot in it, right? Oh, no, we just our sinful tendencies or our addictions. This is the cross that God has given us. You heard the story, right, of the man who, who asked Jesus if he could change his cross. And Jesus said, sure, no problem. So he walked him into a room and it was filled with all different kinds of crosses. And Jesus said, pick what, whichever one you like. He said, great. So he started trying on all these different crosses. He said, oh, this one's uh, just a little too heavy for me. And then this other one, mm, it's just a little too light. I need something a little heavier. This one just irks me a little bit too much. Yeah. So he went around the whole room until finally he picked one. He said, okay, this one's just right. And Jesus just shook his head. See, that's the one I gave you in the first place. <laughs> Jesus has handpicked our cross for each one of us with love. He's not punishing us. What is the cross? The cross is there to transform us, to purify us, as it said in the first reading. A fountain to purify from sin and uncleanliness. If we're honest, all of us have things we're not proud of. We've done things that perhaps nobody even knows about, that we hide down deep within our soul. Maybe we've even forgotten about it until some situation comes about. God gives us the cross to bring those things into the light. To heal us. Those of you who are old, this is the greatest moment of your life where you are climbing the last stretch of the mountain and it's hard, right? You're on all fours. But think about how your soul is being transformed, right? You're, you're changing, right? Like the, like the worm that becomes the butterfly. You will fly. And think about all the graces that you're winning for your loved ones. That arthritis, right? Every time they say, you know, if you wake up in the morning without pain and you're over 40, you're dead. All of us have pain. Offer it up. We used to hear that a lot, right? When we were kids. Offer it up. Pope Benedict asked us to begin that habit again. To offer it up. To bring to the cross, to bring to the crucifix all those sufferings, those moral sufferings, relational sufferings, physical sufferings. Bring it to the cross. Nail it to the cross. Let Christ transform and to bring to fruition all those little crosses in our life. There's only one cross, the cross of Christ. And in every Catholic church, there is a crucifix. And if there's not a crucifix, you're not in the Catholic Church. Reminds me of the story of the little boy. He was a Jewish boy growing up in Paris. And he and his buddies, they went to the Catholic Church. And they noticed at the back there was this room and people were lining up and going in one by one. And they said to themselves, dare you? Dare you go in? Dare you go in? Okay, I'll go in. So one of them went in. And the priest realized that he was just making fun of the sacrament. He didn't even know what it was. So the priest, he said to the little boy, I dare you, go up to the altar, to the sanctuary, kneel down. Look up at the crucifix and say three times, you did that for me, and I could care less. And the little boy, yeah, I can do that, no problem, I sweat. Pas problème, right? as the French would say. So he went up and he knelt down. He looked up at the crucifix and he looked up at the, the crown of thorns and the blood pouring down the face of Christ. He saw the nails in his hands, the wound in his side. 
and he couldn't say it. And that boy became a Catholic. He became a priest. He became the Archbishop of Paris, Cardinal Lustiger. The cross is necessary for us. Our Lord says that. The Son of Man must suffer greatly. He has to be crucified. He must be crucified. He will be killed, and on the third day he will be raised. Killed and raised. Without the cross, there's no resurrection in our life. This, we're not made for this world. I was with a woman last night. Pray for her. Her name is Connie. She's 56 years old, and she's got pancre pancreatic cancer. And she's got maybe two years. And she says, why, Father? Why? Why me? I don't know why her. But we pray together. And all of us have to suffer. We're not made for this world, whether we have two years or 50 years. It's so short. And eternity is forever. God is giving us this gift to purify us. It's our ladder to heaven. So, embrace your cross. Well, first of all, figure out what your cross is. Name it. Put a name to it. Thank God for your cross. When you receive our Lord in communion today, thank Him for choosing your cross and finally embrace it with love. Right? If anyone wishes to be my follower, to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross every day, but not just dragging it behind us. Right? Oh, woe is me. Embrace it with love. Right? Like an athlete, right? You like the pain. You enjoy the sacrifice because you know you're being transformed. You're going to win that gold medal. Let's pray for each other that we have the courage to pick up our cross. If we embrace our cross, our soul will be satisfied as we sang in the, in the psalm. Our sins will be purified and we shall receive our inheritance that is ours because we are children of Jesus. Jesus crucified and Jesus risen victorious from the cross. Amen.